All right, what's up, YouTube? This is Boxing Wave. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. All right, so before I get started, I just want to tell you guys to excuse the background noise. There's a lot of construction going on around my building. And uh, if you guys happen to hear it, I apologize. You shouldn't hear it too bad, but you're going to hear it from time to time, all right? This guy's got a jackhammer right in front of my building, and it's annoying. All right, um, so... Look, I've been doing so many videos on Spence and Bud, you know, but it, it just, it's just more stuff that's, it's just really becoming Pacquiao Mayweather, you know, the new age, the new generation Pacquiao Mayweather. Um, and there's always something happening, whether it's social media, YouTube, Instagram, um, just interviews, just whatever. Anytime one of these two speak, we have to talk about it. It is what it is. Um, but let's talk a lot more about Sean Porter when it comes to this because uh, a couple weeks ago, a couple weeks back, um, I didn't make a, I didn't get a chance to make a video on it, but a couple weeks back, right? Terrence Crawford did an interview, basically saying that Sean Porter is not a priority because that's his friend. You know, uh, he said that these guys are going to decide when they're going to fight each other because of their friendship, right? Cool. Everybody bugged out. Everybody made YouTube videos. You know, I was listening. I was tuning into a few channels. And people were making videos about it, right? And then, you know, Sean Porter also had an interview where, well, it wasn't really an interview. It was, he was on the PBC uh, doing his commentary with Abner Morris or whoever he's usually there with. And he basically co-signed what Sean, uh, what Terrence, Terrence Crawford said. All right, they both said this, and they both said this in the past that their friendship. I didn't know, I didn't know that it was going to run this deep into 2020, where they're going to be saying that they're not going to fight each other at this point because of their friendship. You know, because I remember once upon a time, Keith Thurman and Sean Porter were like best buddies. I mean, these guys, you would see them at fights together. They did interviews together. You know, it was a point where Sean Porter and Keith Thurman didn't seem like it would happen because they were friends. You know? Uh, you know, I don't know if they ever said that they would fight each other, but I remember that, you know, I remember a time where they both were in the division. They both were like the top dog, up-and-coming guys. And there was really never many talks of them actually fighting each other. You know? Until the fight actually happened, at least. So, look, this is how I feel. But you don't really have that many options out there, all right? If Spence doesn't fight you next, right? Let's say he comes back, does a tuna thing. We don't know what Spence is going to do because Spence is talking like he's ready to jump right in the mix of the top dogs in the welterweight division in his first fight back. That's his business. You know, I did a poll on that. I don't know if you guys seen it, but I did a poll on it. It was like over a thousand, it was like 1,500 votes. And I said in that poll, I personally want Spence to come back and have a tune up first, just to make sure that he's on point, that he didn't, he didn't fall back, fall off a little bit. I just want to make sure he's on point because if he does fight a top dog like a Terrence Crawford or a Manny Pacquiao, we don't, if he does happen to lose, I don't want to hear any excuses. I want him to be on his, his absolute best. You know, I, that's just, the, that, that was my stance on it, right? But in that poll, right, I put, who should Spence come back and fight? Should it be Danny Garcia? Should it be Manny Pacquiao? Should it be Terrence Crawford? Or should he fight a tune-up? You know, I think I put another option in there somewhere. But I want to say 42%, I haven't checked in a while, but I want to say like 42% said that he should fight Bud on his first fight back. And I think maybe another 30 something percent said he should fight a tune-up first. You know, and then the rest is history. The rest was Manny Pacquiao was low, Danny Garcia was low. But those two were the top votes. But definitely Bud, you know, I mean, and that's cool. That's cool because, you know what I mean? Listen, this is still boxing. This is still a sport. You are a unified champion. If you have to come back and fight a tough fight, on your first fight back, it is what it is. I mean, we know in MMA and in UFC, guys that are champions, no matter how injured they are, how long they're out, when they come back, they come back and fight the next top dog. It is what it is. You know, or they fight the interim champion. 
You know, they don't have no tune-up fights in the MMA. So if he cause if he does happen to come back and fight a top guy and he wants to actually fight a top guy, because I'm sure he has the option. You know, and I'm sure Al Heyman, I mean, this is his investment, so I'm sure I'm sure they would want him to have a tune-up before. But obviously, if he has the opportunity to fight, let's say, a Manny Pacquiao, he's going to do it. If Manny says, I want to fight him next, I don't expect Bud, uh, not Bud, I don't expect Spence to turn that down if the option is there, okay? Um, but that was my stance on it, right? But regardless, I don't get too far on track. Regardless, if... Trying to go back. What was my point? But you don't have that many options, right? Let's say Manny Pacquiao is not an option, which he's probably not. I don't see Manny Pacquiao fighting Terrence Bud Crawford. I don't see it. You know, I don't see them really being interested in fighting Bud because he could have fought Bud when he was in top rank. You know, he could fought, he could have fought Bud before Bud was even a welterweight. And Bob Arum didn't let it go down. You know. uh Pacquiao's trainer didn't want it to happen either. All right? Not saying that Pacquiao don't want the fight. I'm just saying that I doubt the fight happens. I just doubt it, especially now that he's a PBC fighter. Let's be honest. Pacquiao's more likely going to fight another PBC fighter. Let's be real. Right? Before he fights a guy that's not a PBC fighter. All right? So, look, man. I know you guys want to do this friendship thing. You know, Danny, uh, Danny Jacobs and... And Demetrius Andre doing a friendship thing. Like, these guys were both at 160s. These guys was both holding titles at the same time. And they were saying, like, you know, they wouldn't fight each other unless, you know, they were, like, the absolute last two left. Or, you know, they made that decision. They said somewhat of the same answer. They don't want to fight each other. These guys spar together. I mean, listen. The the division and, 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 and boxing in any, in any division, it's just too small to be that picky. Like, but you really don't have that many options out there for top 10 guys. And I, I listen, I know guys are going to come in the comments and say things like Sean Porter wouldn't have fought Bud if he beat Errol Spence. And that's probably true. Not only because they're friends, but Sean Porter would probably be pushing a fight Manny Pacquiao if he won, if he was unified. Maybe he would have a, a rematch with Spence. He probably wouldn't be pushing the issue to fight Bud. If he hadn't won the fight, you know, uh, this is why Kenny Porter came out and said like, oh, we're waiting for that phone call. Yeah, his camp, his team, they're probably more willing to fight Bud because Bud has a title, you know, and they already lost to Spence, you know, and Manny Pacquiao is not going to fight Sean Porter. But this is, these are the double standards that are out there. I mean, we know Manny. Manny doesn't have any proof. And this, this is not a knock on Manny. It's not a knock on Manny, but at the end of the day, Manny is still holding the title. He's still holding the title. No one's saying that Manny should fight Sean Porter. You know what I'm saying? Like, no one's saying that. But I'm not here to defend it. I'm not defending Bud here. I think Bud should fight Sean Porter, especially right now. Because if you fight Sean Porter... First thing you'll do is shut up these dudes that are so pro Spence that they are disliking anything that Bud does at this point. Anything that he does, they're discrediting it, discredit anything he does at this point. Like his resume doesn't even matter. You know, anything that he's any fight that he's ever had at welterweight doesn't matter. You know, the fact that he holds a title, it doesn't matter. Just to shut them up. And just the satisfaction of, like, the satisfaction of shutting them up, but also that would be your best best name on your resume as far as a welterweight fight. Take the fight. Like, if you say that you both have to agree on it, if you call Sean, like, look, Sean, I want to fight you because spence is gonna go on and fight manny pacquiao or spence is gonna go and fight his tuna or wherever he decides to fight danny garcia right i want to fight you because you're the only other person that'll fight me and porter is still a top five welterweight he's above danny garcia he beat danny garcia and he's always been a welterweight 
Danny Garcia is another guy that I'm saying, like, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy with Danny because it's like, I don't know why people hold Danny to this high, 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 super high standard. I think he's the sixth best welterweight, all right, behind Pacquiao, behind Porter, behind Spence, behind Bud, uh, Sammy Rose, maybe he's the fifth. I can't think of who else is in welterweight right now. But regardless, Danny Garcia is always going to be a mandatory. You know why? Because Danny's going to lose the big fight, but then go on and beat like a like two or three scrubs that he's supposed to be, and then become mandatory again. That's it. That's just man. That's Danny as a, a welterweight. Now I talked about his 140. What he did at 140. What he did at 140. He did. He put in his work at 140. But at 147, he's he he beats regular guys, guys that he's supposed to beat, and it becomes a mandatory again. And it's like, like for example, right now, if Spence fights Danny when Bud is available, no no one's gonna say anything about Spence fighting Danny Garcia. Like I want Spence to fight a tuna, right? Just to make sure he's good. You know why I keep saying that? And I know that goes against which most people that really want the Bud and Spence fight. The only reason why I say that, that I want him to fight a tune-up and I want him to be 100%. Like, I want him to be 100. I want to be sure that he's good. I know he he seems okay. I know he did a little interview on the fight, uh, the Tank Davis fight. And, you know, I know his face was swollen. I know that they say he lost some teeth. But outside of that, you know, nothing really major. Look. The reason why I say I want him to have a tune-up only because, only because he's never suffered that kind of damage in an actual professional fight. At least nothing that I've seen. All right? Um, so, I'd rather him, I'd rather him tune up and make sure he's good and make sure he still looks sharp. Make sure if he takes a big punch, it won't really bother him. You know what I'm saying? I would rather him. I would rather see him do that before going in the ring with a uh, Pacquiao or Garcia or Bud, because that car accident was his first loss to me. That's how I'm looking at it. You don't have to agree. It's just how I look at it. Because he lost to whether he lost to teeth, broke his jaw, whatever it is, whatever fractures or whatever any injuries he suffered. I want to make sure he's good here. Here, I want. I want to make sure he's good. I want to make sure he's still as durable because I want to make sure he's at his best when he fights these other guys because I don't want to hear no excuses. But going back to what I was saying, the people that are saying things like Bud needs to fight him a, a welterweight before fighting Spence, that's, those are people I have an issue with. I have a problem with people that say that. This is my stance. Bud holds a title. Number one, he holds a title. Whether you don't give credit to who he beat, Benavidez, Mean Machine, Jeff Horn, Mir Khan, whether or not you believe those are credible opponents or not, at the end of the day, he holds a title. At the end of the day, he's a bigger challenge than Mikey Garcia was. People forget that Mikey Garcia fight was just two fights ago. It was just two fights ago. Any person that's been defending Spence consistently up to this point had no issues with him fighting Mikey Garcia, even though no one was asking for that fight except for Mikey Garcia himself. Nobody was asking for that fight. It was a mismatch. It was a mismatch before the fight. It was a mismatch after we saw the fight. We weren't asking for that fight. So... If you weren't making an issue, which many of you weren't, you YouTubers know who I'm talking about. If you have a YouTube channel and you've been defending Spence up to this point, why wasn't an issue when Spence fought Mikey Garcia? Right? Why wasn't it an issue? Like when they did big pay-per-view numbers and they had a certain amount of people in, in the Dallas Stadium, it was all great. It was great. It looked great. I even said to myself, I was like, damn, it shit look lit out there. I wish I was out there. I really do. I, it's one thing I always wanted to see is a fight in Dallas Stadium. 
I feel like whatever super fight that we get next, you know, and it could be Pacquiao and Spence or Bud and Spence or whatever, it should be out there. Just because I want to go out there and I want to see a fight in a large arena, like how they do out in London with Wembley. I want to see that. I want to see it. But, yo, let's be honest. As good as the numbers were, the pay-per-view numbers, the, you know, the tickets and then the arena, that fight was a joke. Mikey's fans made it a big fight because we know how the Mexican fan base are. They, 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 they hold their, their fighters down. And that's what they did for Mikey. But as far as the matchup, how is Mikey Garcia more credible than Bud? No one said Mikey needs to fight Sean Porter first. No one said that Mikey needs to fight Danny Garcia first. No, Mikey went up and went straight to Spence. And everybody that loves Spence supported that fight. But they're saying now that Bud don't get the Spence fight until he fights Sean Porter or Danny Garcia. He beats Danny Garcia. Well, so what? If he beats Danny Garcia... They're going to be like, so? Danny already lost to Keith. He already lost to Sean. There's always going to be an issue. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, bro, because I'm trying to, I'm trying to nail this in full circle. I definitely want Bud to fight Sean. So don't think, I'm not going there with that. I want him to fight Sean. I'm with you. I'm not. I'm not with people that have full-blown agendas. I'm with the Sean Porter fight. I'm definitely with that. Because, but if you beat Sean Porter and you beat him in better frat fashion than Spence, Thurman, Kell Brook, then you could shut a lot of mouths right there. You would shut a lot of people down. Because a lot of people are talking. If you really want to shut these guys down, fight Porter. If you can't get Spence, if you can't get Pacquiao, fight Porter. That's the next best up. If you can't get those fights, fight him. All right? But, you know, just doing this, like, we friends and, nah, man, like, you just fought a mandatory. You fought your mandatory. You good. You in a clear. You're in, you're in a clear to fight whoever you want. So tell Bob, and Bob, I, I really hate, I don't you know, y'all know I don't really like promoters anyway. I, I really don't like any of them. But Bob Aram, Bob is not doing a good job at promoting with 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 this whole situation because Bob has gone on air and made it seem like Sean Porter fight really doesn't matter, you know. And he's talked bad about Sean Porter, and it's like as a promoter, why would you be doing that? Like you know, because this could be a really good fight for. For Bud to have on his record. But why would you talk bad about Sean? I have a problem with everybody when it comes to this situation. Seriously. Because everybody is so extreme with their beliefs. Is that they're not even able to make sense out of any of this. It can all work out for everybody. If people would just shut the fuck up. And stop saying so many different things. Like people are inconsistent. People are just you know being, um, being super biased. You got promoters like Bob that's just saying the absolute wrong things to make fights. You know, it's just like, dude. And then Bud, you got to be more aggressive. I was listening, shout out to uh, Bruce Vane. I was just listening to a video this morning where he was like, it's good that Bud went on Twitter and started ranting. He needs to be more aggressive. I agree. Because you know what? Bud, as quiet as he may seem and, and, and stuff, he seems real reserved. When, when a fighter is talking shit to him, he's not reserved. He wasn't reserved against... Jose Benavidez, he wasn't reserved against Hank Lundy and some other fighters that he's faced. He talks that talk. He does it with Tank Davis all the time. So what I don't understand is why is he not putting more pressure? I think it's good that he went on Twitter. I, I, I think it's stupid that people are clowning him that he did that. Why are you clowning the man? They're fighters. He's talking reckless to a guy that he wants to fight. They're fighters. They don't have to be friends. That's what he's supposed to do. So I'm glad he's doing that. All right? So this is this is my view. I want to close this out. But if Porter's an option, 
and Pacquiao and Spence isn't for your next fight, fight Porter. That's my view. Pacquiao's always going to be a priority. And Spence is the fight that everybody wants to see. So you got those two fights, right? Pacquiao, won, people want him for legacy. You know, he's the big name. He's a cash cow. He's been in there with Floyd. Oh, it's this, this, eighth division, all that. Pacquiao, I get it. You know, anybody would want to fight Pacquiao if, if, if they have the opportunity to do so. Especially because he's still fighting on a high level. He beat Keith Thurman and Adrian Broner last year. So, I get that. Spence, that's the fight that everybody wants to see. People are making it seem like they don't want to see the fight. They want Bud to fight the whole world first. No. If the fight is available, take it. Is anyone going to... You know, people are talking like, let's say Spence agree, sends a contract to Crawford, they agree to fight tomorrow. Are anyone going to say, Spence, nah, Spence is stupid for taking that fight. You know, he fighting a nobody, but he fight nobody. No one's going to say that. No one is going to say that. So why are people making it seem as if Bud needs to fight this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy before he gets a fight with Spence? That's ridiculous. That's bullshit. Let's be honest. Spence just fought Mikey Garcia. What did he do? What did he do? What did Mikey do? What has Mikey done since that loss? He hasn't even fought since that loss. And he's fighting Jesse Vargas next. But he got a fight with Spence. And Spence was holding the title. He got a championship fight. But that was okay. You know? No one would ever say... You guys know where I'm going with that. So anyway, back to my point. Fight Porter if Spence... If Spence and Pacquiao is not available. That's what I think he should do. You know? Bob, focus on making that fight. All right? Spence, on the other hand, if you are going to go 100 and go right back into the jungle or the mix of whoever, top fighter, that's on you. That's good. I just don't want to hear no excuses. If, if Spence decides to do that, that means Spence knows yeah, he's good. He knows that he's good. We, him, his trainer, his camp, they know that he's good. If he's going to do that, I'm sure they're not going to risk anything if they jump right back into the mix and fight a Manny Pacquiao. But let's be honest here. Spence is not going to fight Bud over Manny Pacquiao. Because Pacquiao is not going to always be available. Pacquiao could retire at any given moment. You know what I'm saying? He's not going to always be available. So if Spence fights... Manny Pacquiao over Bud. I ain't mad at all. Good. Make your bread. Um, I see that they went on Twitter and they, they, they worked out whatever they need to work on. They talked on the phone. I'm sure it had something to do like, yo, bro, we gonna fight. Just let me do my thing right here. Let me try to get this Pacquiao fight. I'm sure the, I'm sure that conversation went down somewhat like that. Because that would make sense. Like, Spence, get your bread. I want to fight you. I, I'm sure. I don't, That's the thing. I don't have a problem with Errol Spence. It's, it's kind of his fans that I have a problem with. Because what Spence is doing, it, it makes sense. It didn't, you know, certain times, yeah, I disagree with him. When he said, on the other side of the street, you know, uh, you know, when they were actually in face to face and they were going back and forth, there are certain things that Spence said, like, take the easier route, Sean Poit. I didn't like that. You know, because it seemed like to me, you were taking the easier route. And I, I never really viewed you like that. Just like the same thing with Keith Thurman. Keith Thurman started switching up once he became like a champion and shit. You know what I'm saying? He's, you heard him in interviews and he started freezing up when certain names came up. You know, I, I don't want to see that when a guy gets to the top. You know, I want to still see that same hunger they had when they were not a champion and they were just talking about being throwback fighters, stuff like that. So, you know, you talking strap season. Go after the straps. Why are your fans telling you, don't go after the straps. Let those guys get better wins before they face you. If that man is holding the title, you should want to fight him just as equally as you would want to fight a Sean Porter or Manny Pacquiao. He has a title, right? So fight him for the title. 
And Spence, if Pacquiao is not available and Pacquiao chooses to fight Danny Garcia, which is probably going to happen because with Danny setting up and fighting a guy that he have no business, like I haven't read catch and people want to play like that's a good fight. If Danny's setting up fighting guys like that, that's that's because he's probably got a good fight coming up soon. I mean, his very next fight. So it's probably going to be Spence. It's probably going to be Pacquiao, but not Pacquiao. It's probably going to be Spence, one of those two. I don't know. All right, but Danny keeps getting great opportunities without having to do much. And people give him a pass from it because he's a PVC guy. You know? Like, let's all be very consistent. I know I have been very consistent on this channel as far as who's fighting food. Not no fanboy stuff. I love Bud. That's my favorite fighter. But I like Spence, too. I do like Spence. I just, I'm more of a Bud fan. I prefer Bud. But after Bud... At welterweight, like right now, I, I got Spence. It's between those two. I think those two are the very best right now. I think those two would beat everybody else in the division, including Manny Pacquiao. That's just my opinion. All right? Um. So anyway, um, I think I covered everything, man. Uh, yeah, man, I think I covered everything. Just going to wait and see who these guys just decide to fight, and we move on from there. All right? Peace.